Hey gang, Rick here with Let's Level Up, and on this Kickstarter preview we're going to be taking a look at Illuminate Incorporated's debut project, Shibboleth. Uh, this game is akin to something like Love Letter, but it has an interesting bonus mechanic built into the point system, uh, and you play a total of five rounds, the player with the most points wins. Now thematically, this is a uh, post-revolution, and there are three different classes of people which will be randomly determined at the beginning of the game, which will allow us to bonus on. So follow me to the table, I'm going to show you a little bit of how Shibboleth is played, and then after that I'll give you my final thoughts on the project, and if I think you should back it or not. Shibboleth is a game in which there is a revolution that just took place, and there are three different classes of people primarily responsible. There are the leaders of the revolution, there are a group of minions who kind of did all the dirty work, and then there are the enemies themselves of the revolution. Now, those three classes are going to be randomly determined at the end of the game and have a lot to do with the end game scoring. But Shibboleth itself is a game about card counting, bluffing, and playing the right thing at the right time. Our hands are going to be limited. Only having a maximum of two cards in it at a time so when we play a card and what we play is going to be very very crucial every single round of the game i play a, i draw a card and i play a card on my turn so i usually have two cards available to me um or at least two cards to choose from when I play on every other turn when other people are playing. I only have one card in my hand. So this game is kind of similar to Love Letter in that regard. I play the card, it yields an action. Uh, when I play a card, I'm going to play it on the left or most side of my play space, and we'll get into examples of play in just a couple seconds. Um, so... What I wanted to do is kind of go through the different cards and the different factions, and or rather the classes in the game, and go through and teach you in what they do themselves. So the first class we're going to take a look at is the royalty class. Now this is kind of the highest ranking uh, class in the game. You can see that the point value is 8. The name of the card is there. It says royalty. Again, the artwork in this game is absolutely fantastic. Royalty cannot be discarded. If I ever disc have to am forced to discard this card... I lose the game, or rather I lose the round. In Shibboleth, we're going to play a maximum of five rounds, and whoever has the most points at the end of that is going to be declared the winner. So if I'm able to bank royalty at the end of the game and get eight points, that is a huge advantage. Um, and then again, depending on what my bonuses are, I'm able to get more points off of that. Uh, the next card that we're going to take a look at is the Wealthy. Now, the Wealthy are worth seven, and the Wealthy has an ability. It says it must be discarded if you have or draw an intellectual or artist card. Uh, and sorry, I should have said before, the Royalty, there's a card count of two, and the Wealthy, there's a card count of two. Um, so these are rarer in the deck, uh, but definitely ones that you're going to want to make sure... And in Shibboleth, I can lie about what's in my hand, but if there's ever a card played, I have to honor the rules of the game. So I couldn't say I didn't, I don't have the wealthy card when I do in the event that I'm forced to discard. So um, let's keep that in mind as you're playing the game. The next card we're going to take a look at are the intellectuals. Now the intellectuals are worth five points, and there are two copies of that in the deck. Now the intellectuals' ability states you get to look at a player's hand and choose to let them keep or discard it. Um, so again, if I play the intellectual and I look at my opponent and they happen to have royalty, I could make them discard that card and they would therefore lose the game. But if they have a card that I don't think is going to hurt me very much, I may well go ahead and let them keep it. The next card is the artist. Uh, and again, the artwork in this is just fantastic. Um, the card point value is worth four, and there are three artists in the deck. Uh, the artist allows you to trade hands with another player or choose two other players to switch hands. Um, so this is, again, I love cards and mechanics in a game that lets you manipulate what another player's strategy may be. And uh, the artist is a good, good example of that. The next card is the scientist, and I, th I thought the scientist looks a little bit like Johnny Depp. Uh, my wife actually called that out. She says he looks like Ichabod Crane uh, from Sleepy Hollow and Johnny Depp's performance in that. Uh, but again, just fantastic. Um, the scientist allows you to compare your hand with an opponent's, and before you get to compare that, you actually choose high or low. Um, and uh, or, excuse me, whether the highest card or the lowest card is discarded. Um, if the cards happen to be tied, nothing happens. Um, but if you are forced to discard, let's say I play the scientist and I have the royalty and you have an artist, uh, it, knowing that I have royalty, I may say the lower card gets discarded here. 
The middle class is the next card. She is worth two. Uh, the middle class is you are immune to other players' effects until the end. Of, excuse me, until your next turn. So in a four-player game, there's a very, very powerful protection card to play. Um, there are three middle class in the game. And excuse me, there are only two scientists in the game as well. Uh, and the next card are the working class. And the working class, uh, again, there's a lot of these guys. Oh, excuse me, there's only three of these guys. Uh, but this allows you to discard one card from the deck to the discard pile. So it allows you to mill the deck out. Um, and again, uh, getting rid of this deck faster ends the game a little quicker and allows us to score points. So if we're working on a strategy to escape, and we'll talk about that here in a minute, um, it, it's, it's, it's a good strategy to go through and do. The last card are the Gorillas. Uh, the Gorillas are worth zero, and there are five of them in the deck, uh, but the Gorillas allow you to guess what's in an opponent's hand. If you happen to get that right, the opponent is knocked out of the round. Um, so Gorillas are a great way to eliminate opponents throughout the game. So again, all of these cards at the beginning of the game are going to be shuffled. I'm going to randomize as best we can. That's not a good randomization job. And then what we're going to do is blindly take one and put it back in the box and discard that. And then we're going to draw the top three cards to form. The first card that we draw are going to be the leaders of the revolution. The next card we draw are going to be the minions in the revolution. In this case, the royalty are the minions. And then finally, the last card we draw are going to be the enemies of the revolution. Now, each player at that point, and I'm going to zoom out here really quick, but each player at that point is going to be dealt one card um, that they're going to have in their hand. The rest of the cards will go somewhere where all players can reach. And then on your turn, again, you're going to keep your cards hidden, but on your turn, you're going to draw a card and then pick a card to play. When I decide to play a card, in this case middle class, it's going to go on the far left corner of my play area. The next time I play a card, it's going to go to the right. So you can see the last card that I play should be on the right side, and I should build a kind of a mural of classes as the game goes on. So let's talk end game scoring here. Keeping in mind that the three factions here are on the table, again, the leaders, the minions, and the enemies, and again, randomly decided every time, every time we play a game, um, there are a couple things to remember. One, there are bonuses that we can get during the play of each game, um, and that all stems around a wanted criminal bonus. So if I force somebody to discard a card that is a member of the enemy faction, I get two points, or whichever player have forces the reveal of the discard gets two bonus points. And that can happen potentially multiple times in a turn. There are two also end-of-round bonuses. Uh, one is called Judgment, and one is called Escape. Uh, in Judgment, all players except one are knocked out of the round. That player scores the base value of the final card they possess, which is this guy here, and then you also get a leader bonus. So if the card that you have matches the leader, you'll get a bonus three points from that. If you happen to match the minions, you'll get a bonus one point. So in this case, I would get eight points for my royalty if I was the last person standing, plus one because it matches the minion. So a total of nine points for the turn is a huge, huge amount of points. I think the only way to be bigger is if I got the leader bonus as well. Um, Finally, there's an escape bonus as well. When the deck runs out of cards while more than one player is still left alive, all surviving players receive bonuses based on the point value of their last cards. Um, there is an enemy bonus here that you also get. In an escape, any players who have members of the Enemies of the Revolution score a bonus of 5 points for getting out alive. And in an escape, any surviving player whose last cards are the same card type receive an extra bonus point. So we're able to, again, stack those additional bonuses. So I'm either going to try to knock people out as we play the game, or I'm going to try to score these massive bonuses in the event of an escape or a judgment. Um, so keep that, uh, it's rather, judgment is for knocking people out, and the escape is just making it out alive. Uh, and again, if we can match things up here on the minion side, or excuse me, on the enemy side, we'll get a ton of bonus points. So, again, we play five rounds of this game. It's going to be very fast-paced. Um, it could get a little thinky as you get later in the turns. Um, your decisions start to get really heavy, especially when certain players start getting knocked out. And I really...
really like that about this game. So follow me back to the game room and give you my final thoughts and if I think you should back Shibboleth. That is it for Shibboleth, and I think right out of the gate we need to take a look at a couple different factors. Uh, one, this game is very easy to learn, very easy to play, and very portable. Look at the size of this. I can fit it in my pocket and take it with me pretty much anywhere. It doesn't require a lot of play area to play. Um, the artwork in this game is absolutely phenomenal. The character art is just, I mean, it's really, really good stuff. Um, the characters themselves, you can easily read and identify who they are. They all have a unique feel to them. And uh, the way that plays in with the three different classes in the bonusing section um, is really cool. I like the fact that we have not only the leaders, the minions, and then the enemies of the revolution all together. And then we get different things depending on who we are at the end of the game. And again, that's determined by the card that I keep. Um, overall, I think Shibboleth is a great game. If you're a fan of Love Letter, I think this is, a, this is an easy grab. It's different enough to Love Letter to make it worth having. And at a $20 price point buy-in for the campaign, it's a no-brainer for me. So take a look at this campaign. There's a link in the description of this video. Go to it. Take a look at Illuminate's project and definitely consider backing because I think this is one to have on your shelf or in your pocket or thrown in your game bag. It's again, very portable, very fun, and something really, really easy to teach and learn. Um, if I had to give any criticism about the game and the components itself, um, again, this is a prototype that I'm looking at. Uh, the rule book is, uh, has, has, has already gone through a couple editions since I've had the game, um, and it's getting better with each one, so it makes it a little easier to learn. Um, but the player aids are a little hard to read to me. The font is small, and the font is kind of one of those cursive handwritten fonts. So for me, it's harder to understand that, and I have to bring the card really close. I'm also going blind as I get older, uh, which may be a bigger problem for me than it is you. Um, but I think Shibboleth is a good game. Um, with that nitpicking aside, definitely one to consider backing again. Um, I'd like to thank Andrew for allowing me to take a look at this game, and I definitely wish you guys luck in the project, because this, again, is a cool game, and definitely one that needs to be made. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and what are you waiting for, for that matter? And <laughs> please tell your friends, because that's how you help us grow. All of our social media presence is available on our website, letslevelup.net. Um, and all that information again in the description of this video. So reach out to us. Let us know what games you should have our or we should have our radar on, and uh, you know what we'd like to see next on the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, game on.